You're listening to the Confidence Alchemist radio show with your host, the Confidence Alchemist himself, Keith Blakemore Noble. To find out more, visit theconfidencealchemist.com. But not before you've listened to this episode of the Confidence Alchemist radio show. Hello, welcome to another episode of The Confidence Alchemist with me, your host, The Confidence Alchemist himself, Keith Blakemore Noble. And this week, I have got a lovely, wonderful guest with me. My guest is Deborah Meredith. Now, Deborah is, uh, if, if you listen to the Winning in Life and Work uh, uh, show as well, if you don't listen to it, then Go check it out. You'll you'll like it. Uh, but if, if you've listened to that, you'll uh, you'll recognize Deborah's name from there because we had a great chat a few episodes ago, um, all about uh, business lessons that she got from rapid growth and insolvency of her first business, and also about uh, the global conversation that she is she's creating around psychological abuse. And I'm very very pleased that that uh, Deborah agreed to come back. Uh, and to be on the Confidence Alchemist radio show because, uh, amongst amongst many other talents, Deborah is a scriptwriter and uh, uh, and an, an actor. Actor, uh, she's got her equity card, and as uh, the the way she described it was she, uh, at that point in life where many people in uh, looking to get into performing performing arts would be saying, "Oh, you know what? It's." Uh, there's, there's no point anymore. I've, uh, it, it's too late. That was precisely the point at which Deborah got her got her equity card and, and uh, got got her spotlight account, etc. So, so, just goes to show that it, it is never ever too late. And so, Deborah uh, has agreed. We're going to have a chat to, to explore her the the ins and outs of how she got into acting, how she got out of it, and got back into it again. And we're also going to look at how this. This, uh, the confidence that she got from uh, being in the performing world impacted her business and, and uh, personal life and vice versa as well. So stick around. There's gonna, it's going to be a heck of a ride. But let's just check that, uh, that Deborah's there. Are you there, Deborah? I am. Hello, Keith. Hello. Lovely to, lovely to speak with you. Lovely to speak with you. Um, for people who haven't caught you in uh, the on the other the other show, or for people who are not already aware of you, just give us a, a quick oversight. Who who is Deborah Meredith? Okay, well, as you said, I'm a scriptwriter and actor, but I'm not a scriptwriter in the traditional sense. I call myself a producer, director, scriptwriter, and actor, but I'm actually a coach because I help people to rewrite their script to step out of the wings, into the spotlight, and create their blockbuster life. So it's a bit of a play on words of the skill set I've got, my love for acting, and obviously my passion for it. And I decided that my coaching practice had to reflect me as an individual, me as a person. And I wanted to, you know, encourage people who were similar to me, attract people who were similar to me, to work with me. So that's why I went down that route. But I'm Deborah. I got my equity card and spotlight membership at the age of 40, which was the fulfillment of a lifelong ambition, which started when I was 14 years old, discovered drama. I, up until that point, I'd always wanted to be a nurse, did a couple of drama lessons and a few plays in school and thought, actually, I really like this. And I seemed to be quite good at it. So I started to pursue that more. And when I was 17, I went and auditioned, as you do for drama college. And I got offered a deferred place at RADA, which I never took. And I don't really have any regrets. But that's when I kind of think, oh, maybe, you know, life would have taken a very different turn if I had. But... I didn't take it. The ambition to be a professional actor stayed with me for all of my life. And when life and business changed drastically as I was approaching 40, I decided I was going to pursue my lifelong ambition once more because I had nothing else, nothing else to lose. Um, so that was it. 
Wow. So I know, let's 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 back step there a moment. So uh, early on in your life, you were interested in drama, and you you got the offer of a place at Rada, and you didn't take it. What what what? What's going on there? I know. Well, I blame the naivety of youth. My first boyfriend, who I had been with since I was fourteen, proposed to me in that year, and we got engaged when I was eighteen. And as a very naive 18-year-old, I thought, I can't possibly leave him to go to London for three years. Um, if I'd only known then what I know now, things would have been very different. But it, was, it gave me a lot of life experience, and it set me off on a different path, which brought me to speaking to you on winning at life and work. So I've got no regrets. I would never have ended up speaking to you otherwise, Keith. That is a very good way of looking at it. Absolutely. So Rada's loss is our gain. Absolutely. <laughs> Not sure they'd see it that way, but hey, there we, <laughs> there we go. There. Did, 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 you, uh, did you ever end up uh, going back to Rada at any point, or was, was that the, the moment had gone and uh, you moved on? No, I didn't go back. And then bit like you touched on in your introduction, you know, at 40 years old or approaching 40, I considered it and I thought, I don't think any drama school is going to take me seriously at this age because let's face it, that is the age that most actors and certainly most women, their career starts to diminish unless they're A-list. I never ever wanted to be A-list. I wanted to be a job in actor. Um, but I thought... I'm too old. I haven't got the the name behind me. I haven't got the career, the CV behind me. But actually, I still want to do this. I want to know that I can achieve my lifelong ambition, which was to get my equity card that said I was a professional actor. And so that's what I set out to do. Interesting. So, so what what was it um, about life that made you uh, come back? to uh, wanting to achieve this lifelong ambition of, of uh, getting your equity card. What, what kind of, because uh, you, you started off in life wanting to, to be involved in drama. You got the offer of a place at RADA. You turned it down for true love, which sadly life isn't like the fairy tale. So that didn't, didn't kind of work out, which is a shame, but it's a beautiful, a beautiful story. And you go through life and then suddenly you go, right, you know what? It's time to get that equity card. What 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 can happen? What how did life turn around to to bring you back into 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 the calling? Well, let me take you right back to that Rada offer, and this was prior to me being proposed to. And my parents said to me, "You know what? It's a precarious profession. If you're going to go into acting, go to college for a year and learn shorthand and typing." That way you'll always be able to get a job. So I went to college. I didn't last the year. I lasted three months, but it was long enough to learn shorthand and typing. Um, And I got bored. I wanted to go out and earn money. So I managed to get myself a secretarial job and then worked my way up the corporate secretarial ladder. So I had a career as a corporate PA working for chairman, chief execs of private companies, global companies. I, you know, I worked in London. I was working across multiple time zones. I had a really good career and I loved that, but I never really felt fulfilled. I was getting good money. I was having a good job. I had lots of responsibility, but it wasn't what I wanted to be doing. So I always, always maintained my love and links with drama by still doing a lot of amateur work and I was doing that and I know I love being on a stage I prefer being on a stage to being in front of a camera Um, and I still do but I knew that that was it I'd got to a stage in my life again you touched on it in the introduction I'd left corporate world I'd set up my own business that had collapsed for various reasons I was in a position where I didn't have to work So I thought, you know what, you've got nothing left to lose. Why not give it a go? And so I actually signed up to an extras agency. 
Now, I know that professional actors generally sort of frown and look down their noses at people who are extras, but I thought the only way I'm going to get into this industry is to start right at the bottom. So that's what I did. I went in, I joined a couple of extras agencies, and I was getting a lot of work. Gradually, I started getting offered lines, which promoted me up through the ranks. And then one day I thought, you know what? I've got the experience. I saw an advert for a professional touring production of a brand new play. So I submitted my CV, put my experience on there, but quite naughtily, just omitted the fact that it had been amateur experience or extras experience. A bit naughty. I call it marketing. And... <laughs> And I submitted my CV, not really expecting to get anywhere, but just thought, you know what, you've got to be in it to win it. I got called for an audition. I got offered the part. And it was a small touring production that went around the southwest of England, so Bristol and Somerset, that region. Thoroughly enjoyed doing that. That gave me the last little bit I needed in order to get my equity and spotlight memberships. So the cards came through. But then life took another turn. And I had to make a decision between my career and my lifelong ambition or my son. It's a bit of a no brainer. Your child is always going to win over I was in a position where I was being offered other work in touring productions, but realized that that meant instability for my son. It meant dragging him around the country on weekends and it wasn't fair to him. So I decided I've got my equity card. It's always there. I've still got the experience. I've still got the ability. I can go back to that. The time I have with my son, the time he is in school is precious. I need to focus on that for five years. I've waited, you know, 30 years to get my equity card. Another five years isn't going to meet, make that much of a difference. And so that's what I did. Bizarrely, earlier this month, I had a call from the director and scriptwriter who I'd worked with on that very first tour in production asking me if I would be interested in being in a play that she is producing in Bristol in November. Of course I said yes. And then we had a conversation because I work in a school during term times. So she's aware of that. And she agreed that we would do the rehearsals and the performances to fit in with my availability and my school hours. So it might not be quite the, the acting CV that I wanted, it might not be what I envisaged when I was that sort of 14 year old deciding this is the career path I wanted to go down. But for me right now, it's fulfilling that desire. It's certainly fulfilling my lifelong ambition. It's another credential on my professional CV. It means I can keep my family together. It means I create my own blockbuster life. It's my life, my terms. And it's me calling the shots, if you like. And I've still got that professional bit at the end of it. Yeah, nice. Beautiful. That's, I, I, I love that. That's a really good way of... Uh really good way of building it up and i guess it kind of shows that it's it's never too late uh when when you have a passion it never leaves you and it's never too late to do something about it it certainly isn't and in the interim i've done voiceover work for various people so of course that all adds to your professional cv people won't recognize my face um but some people will recognize my voice And it all helps. There's lots of other ways you can be a performer without being on a big cinema screen, you know. And it's when you take that back. I do motivational speaking now. I'm still on a stage. I'm still talking to an audience. A lot of the things I learned through my drama experience, I'm still applying on a day-to-day basis. You know, 
an argument could be we all play roles throughout the day. We play multiple roles.